Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time with Dr. Smith from Accomplished Health and Wellness and um, Heather Fiore from Free State Nutrition. And Heather's a little under the weather on this rainy day. Mm -hmm. um, she has a little bit of cold. We don't have any tea today, we just have water. <laughs> And if she gets Yay. into a coughing spell, <laughs> then she has her water. So yes. that's always good. Yeah. I um, So today we are talking about toddler nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. And all this good stuff. And um, anything that you want to start out with? Uh, I thought we should um, kind of mention what, what's happening with toddlers, like sure. how they're learning how to eat. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a big thing. I mean, it's a big. There's like yeah. a lot going on there, right? Yeah. Like oh, gosh. from yeah. the time they're like from the bolus. Yeah, like when you first introduce foods they to the, taste it. They have to taste it, and they have to figure out how what to is swallow this? it. Yeah, what to do with it, and then they have to figure out how to chew, and then yeah. then they're getting teeth, and there's like oh. and that's all uncomfortable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember when my kids were um, learning how to eat. And it's so funny because like more of it came out than went in. Mm -hmm. you know, like, right. It's all coming down. All the peas are everywhere. Yes. Or... And plus, they're like they're in enjoying the like the whole sensory experience, right? right. It's not just about eating this. Right. Like, oh, like, like, what does it feel like in yeah. my hair? What does it feel like in my hair? Right. You know? <laughs> what does it look like on mommy? Yeah. What happens when I throw the bowl? Oh, on the floor. Yeah. Oh, ha ha. Mommy looks funny because yeah. she's like all flipping out. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all great. Yes, all great that stuff. Is and great. the dog loves it too because yeah. the dog's looking it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then they learn how to feed themselves. Right, at some point right. they don't want you putting the spoon in their mouth. They want to do it oh themselves. no! Yeah, definitely. They want and then they choke foods. themselves on the spoon because they're like, <laughs> it doesn't go in any further, dude. Oh, yeah. You gotta stop. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that's a really good point is that like kids have a really good gag reflex. Like, oh. Of course, you should be careful with choking hazards. Yeah. But it turns out like, I mean, they're just they do. quite often gagging. Gag. On everything mm -hmm. new. Yes. And new textures, new tastes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you should worry. You should look out for choking and prevent yeah. choking. But um Grapes, no grapes that, are yeah. big. Um, grapes and hot dogs, you mm -hmm. know, because yeah, you want to cut them in fours so that they're not round. Because mm -hmm. a grape is a perfect thing to get lodged yeah. in everywhere. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. So, anyways, so what's that? And then the other big thing is how their appetite varies. Oh yeah, so like thirty percent mm -hmm. from day to day. Yeah, yeah, and they're. Um, they're just kind of, you never know from day to day how much they're going to eat. Yeah, or meal to meal. Like maybe they're having a growth spurt. Right. Or maybe they're learning how to do something else, right? Maybe they're learning how to walk, or maybe they're getting teeth, or yeah. maybe they just have their shots. Like I, So many things are going on. They're learning yeah. so many things that, you know, food maybe isn't like... Uh, high like, on their list. Yeah. It's just yeah. not the thing they want to do that day, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, we actually see yeah. that... Um, a lot of times when you'll have like say a chubbier baby and I always mm -hmm. tell my parents oh you know I'm not worried about it you know once they hit between one and two mm -hmm. like the food just is not as big of a deal to them as exploring their environment you know it's yes. all about like what's over here and what's going on and they're moving more mm -hmm. and so they might not necessarily be eating as much but they're also more active so um yeah a lot happens during that one and two age group so you know um we've talked about this before um just about obesity and then underweight so um in kids we you know we don't really look at bmi we look at their weight percentile and so in kids it's like anyone over 85 percent is considered overweight and then um, greater than 95% is going to be considered obese. But then we also have underweight. So underweight is going to be 2 to 5 percentile. Um, it's going to be underweight. But really, it's more like, are they staying on their growth curve? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a small person that, you know, a small baby from the start, and they're staying on that 2% growth curve, that's not really considered underweight. It's when they drop off growth curve so say they're like on the 10th percentile and now they're at the two percentile that's considered you know right like a failure to thrive or 
um, underweight um, kind of a thing. So I mean, I think the take home message Faltering is weight is the new term. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. One. Is ask your doctor, ask your, ask your child's doctor if you're worried about it. Like, yeah. let them figure it out. Like, don't just assume, oh, because they're not eating now, they're, yeah. you know, they're they're skinny or whatever yeah. you think. Like, just talk to your doctor about it and, and get the real facts. Because yeah. Because if you try to base it on how they're eating. Don't Google it. No, don't do, never do that. You know, actually, like, if you look at the growth curve, it's actually shaped like that, and they're, it's shaped like that for a reason, because they do start to plateau, mm -hmm. and we start to kind of see that plateau a little bit around between one and two years, so um, a lot of times that's normal, so, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so what kinds of, like, they, they've had some new changes to, you know, it used to be, like, no honey until you're a year, no seafood until um, two, and no peanuts until three. Mm -hmm. Or peanuts and maybe peanuts and seafood. Anyways, honey still is nothing till a year. But you don't want to give honey to an infant, and that's because of botulism. The honey has botulism in it, and it's not processed correctly in the baby, and so babies can get botulism poisoning. Whereas in adults, we process it fine so you just don't want to eat out of the you know bloated jar thing for the not jar but can you know yeah so that smells gross don't even the, open it but the honey is okay yeah when you're over one um but peanuts and stuff um yes. anything peanutty you're actually supposed to introduce early now because of allergies so right. they say what um Moderate to severe eczema, anyone with moderate to severe eczema, you introduce peanut containing things like peanut butter, not peanuts, because they can't chew, hello, you know. <laughs> Maybe peanut or, flour? Pe yeah, or peanut, peanut butter, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's like at four months. Yeah, so crazy. Yeah, and then really um, if it's like mild eczema, then it, you can wait till six months. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's kind of a new thing, and that's also um, with seafood as well. You can start to introduce that, and it's because they want you to get it in early before the immune system is full blown, so that the immune system isn't like creating that allergy that they're prone to. So, yeah. Anyways, I think it's a good rule of thumb to just think about you know making sure your kid gets exposed to lots of different things. Oh yeah. Right. Like yeah. You know, you might be on some particular diet where Special you're, diet. you know, limiting this or that, or you cut out food groups, which is a whole other topic that we've already discussed. A lot. Not recommended. But definitely not for your kids. Like, right. kids need to get a little bit of everything. And right. the other thing is that the same time period, like between one and two or, you know, two and a half or so, kids start to kind of... Um, shut down and get really limited in terms of new stuff that they're yeah, going to try. Right. So you really want to get it in there right away. Like yeah. expose them to as many things as possible during yeah. that like honeymoon period. Yeah, when they're, they're more open minded. They're just going to eat everything. Like, what is this? I yeah. don't know. Meh, meh, meh. Ew, I don't know. I like that. Yes. Yeah. So know that they're going to stop doing that at some point. Yes. And it's not because they're picky. It's because mm -hmm. they're normal toddlers. Yeah. So um, what about if we talk about like timeline of introducing things? So okay. like, let's see, cow's milk, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, so we introduce whole milk at one. Mm -hmm. And before that, it's breastfed. Breast is best is what they say. Mm -hmm. I say fed is best. That is correct. <laughs> we don't want any starving babies. Um, so, you know, breast milk or formula, whichever, up until they're a year, and then you can tra transition over to whole milk. Mm -hmm. And um, and then it's whole milk, right, until they're two. two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you can drop down. That's Casey, our, um, he's our new um, trusty sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really sidekick with us, though. He just <laughs> hangs in the back. Do you have somebody? Okay. We're going to have another trusty sidekick that's going to go back there. So, um, anyways, we might actually um, just go back. Do you want to go back to your office? Right now. We can walk back there. I don't know. Uh, we'll ask him to close the door. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. 
he's going to walk through with his trusty sidekick. And then, um, can you close the door? Can you close the door when you go in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's going to close the door. Trusty sidekick, number one and two. <laughs> All right. But that's a good point about the milk because it's a good time when you're switching over to cow milk mm -hmm. to switch over to a cup or a sippy cup. Yes. Get rid of those bottles. Yes. And that's another thing, um, juice, you know, mm. like juice. You should never give that in a bottle mm -hmm. or a sippy cup because that sugar gets all in there. And then I just keep sucking on it. And then guess what? Tooth decay. Yeah. We don't want that. Even though they're baby teeth, it's still no good. Yeah, because actually baby teeth decay actually also correlates to adult teeth decay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so we don't want that. So, um and there's limits, right, to how much juice you should get. So, um, what is it, like four to six ounces mm -hmm. a day um, when you're four to six years? Four to six ounces. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's easy. Easy. And then under four, um, like between one. So, nobody under one should be getting juice, period. None. And it should be 100% juice, not like that. Stuff that is 20% juice mm -hmm. that we all know the name of and has juice in it. Name. And so, but once you turn a year, like one to three years, then it's four ounces, right? Mm -hmm. right. So right. That's, a cup. that's like this much. That's a very little amount. Your bottle should not be filled with juice. Just saying. Right. So all throughout the day, water is really the best thing. Water. You know, if you're going to have your milk. kid drinking stuff throughout, it should yeah. be water. Milk, I mean, because milk has limits too, right? So you it only, yes. only want to have, um, yeah. you know, two cups a day for kids. Yes. Two cups or 16 yeah, ounces. Yeah, it's like 16 ounces, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you really don't want to drink that all day long either. No. And, it's, and if you do, it's not that milk itself is bad. It's just going to replace other things. Right. It's going to fill up those tiny little bellies. They're not going to eat. And they're not going to eat and they're going to miss out on iron. Yes. And they're often iron deficient. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Like, um, that's why you don't introduce whole milk um, before age one because their gut isn't mature enough to be able to process mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is it causes these micro bleeds and it's enough bleeding that can cause anemia or low blood count but it's not enough um bleeding that you would actually see in the stool no yeah so um so definitely no whole milk before a year it's um after a year and then it's limited 16 ounces mm -hmm. they all want more they do and they want it before bedtime and you're not supposed to do it then either because they need to brush their teeth because yeah, milk has sugar in it too. Sugars, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So, what else? Um. Fat. Should we be limiting fat intake before a year? Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, it's really important for their neurologic development. They need that mm -hmm. fat. They, they need it. Let them have that fat. Mm -hmm. But then, what happens from like one to three years? Then what do we do? We limited a little bit. A little bit. I mean, yeah. you kind of ease into yeah. getting more <clears throat> lower fat. Yeah, it's like 30 to 40% of your total daily energy intake. Um, and I think of that like, what the heck is 30% of their daily energy? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I wish I could bottle their energy and then sell it. Because that would be so much better than Red Bull. <laughs> right? Toddler energy. Yes, yeah. Yes. We could call it that the toddler energy drink. Mm -hmm. Don't give it to your toddler. Mm -hmm. And check with your doctor beforehand because you might have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but they, and they should get polyunsaturated and monounsaturated mm -hmm. fats, right? But no trans fats. Yeah. We're all anti trans fats. Um, and what is that other, so like when you're reading the ingredients list and, mm -hmm. and you know, they have to have like, it has to say, it has to be 0.5, what is it grams, mm -hmm. of trans fats in order to actually be on the label as yes. trans fat. But you can look for um, hydrogenated, hydrogenated oils. oils. Right. 
But I think now the rule supposed is to be taken it's about. supposed to be all gone. Yeah. I mean, I would check we'll what see. it is, but it should be all gone. It's supposed to be. Yeah. I haven't looked. Um, I don't know I haven't either. Yeah. What about protein? How much protein do you think when there? I was kind of surprised by the amount. Um, it wasn't. It was like 5 to 20% from one to three years. And I was kind of surprised because I would think, you know, they're building muscle and everything. They would need more protein. But um, no, they mm -hmm. need more carbs. You know why they need more carbs? Because they're constantly moving. There's that yeah. toddler energy. Yeah, yeah. So, Fueled by carbs. You know, they um, had this... Um, experiment that what they did was they took this room right and then they um, put in it adult sized toddler things so like <laughs> it was like what um the stairs would be like oh my equivalent gosh. to amazing. a toddler for an adult right yeah and then like just all these normal things that were in your house but that were like they made it into adult size and then they took these athletes mm -hmm. and they put them in this room and they said, have fun for an hour. And they were like sweating bullets. <laughs> and we asked our kids to like walk up the stairs with us, you know, and the yeah. stairs are like it's exhausting. as big as their leg. Right. You know? And they're like hiking up. And so then they asked these adults to do it and they, exhausting. they were exhausting. So it's interesting, right? Because they are so little. Like they need more energy, you know, proportionally, but the amount is still little. So sometimes it's helpful um, to think about like what a portion size is for toddler because um, you know, they should eat. But sometimes, you know, as parents, we always worry like they're getting enough and they didn't eat much and all this stuff. Well, a serving size for most foods is a tablespoon per year. Oh, so that's not a lot. Mm -mm. Yeah. It really isn't. Mm -mm. Well, and that's, um, you know, why those plates are like this big, you know, kid plates, yeah. right? Because that was another um, important thing is that they should not be eating off of adult plates, right? They should mm -hmm. be eating off of the small kid plate. And we, probably, we shouldn't be saying clean your plate. No. Especially if it's like, okay, two tablespoons. For mm -hmm. a two-year-old, yeah, is that like of each thing? Yeah, so like, pretty much. Not that you only need one serving of each thing each right. meal, but just to give you an idea of like what's one serving, right? right. So, so that's why my little dude, when I put like one serving or one tablespoon of hummus, and he will eat that, and then he's like almost done. done. Yeah, <laughs> like dude, you didn't hardly eat anything but the hummus. That's all you need, and that's all he wanted. Right. And then he's like off to play. Yeah. Yeah. That explains a lot, actually. So, you know, when you're putting that big piece of lasagna on there mm -hmm. and they don't eat it all, that's because their stomach isn't real. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It is so important that we don't interfere with their, their you know, signals. Their signals. They yes. know. They how know what much they're, yeah. They need. They know. We they don't. are so good. Like, I look at my daughter all the time and I'm like, what do you mean you can't finish that bowl of ice cream? Right. What's what? wrong with you? I it's so a... wish I could say that. I'm done. Yeah. Some of that ice cream. Right. I'm like, don't waste that ice cream. I'll eat it myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. They, that, they know. They will yeah. stop. They don't care if there's one no. bite or 18 it's bites crazy. left. They're done. Yeah. When they're done. And I we wish should I had not that willpower. Yeah, I know, right? And um, so, you know, the carbs, when we were talking about carbs, mm -hmm. and that's like their biggest category, it was like 45 to 65 percent should mm -hmm. be carbs. And, um, but where do the carbs come from? So your carbs should come from veggies and whole grains, beans and lentils. Mm -hmm. So that's not really where most of our kids' carbs are coming from. Mm -hmm. And fruit. Okay. And fruit, yeah, fruits and veggies, yeah, definitely, whole grains and all that. Yeah. So just like what we should be getting our carbs from. Exactly. And and then also fiber, because fiber is going to hang out longer. Um, and so I was interested to know that um, they actually have 14 grams per 1,000. It's like five 
grams per day of um, uh, soy. Wait, 14 grams per 1,000 kilograms or mm -hmm. the age plus five grams. Because I was like, who knows that, right? Correct. But the age plus five grams. So if you're two, it would be seven grams a day. Of, of fiber, right. So when so you're 100, it should be 105. No, just kidding. Right. That's just for kids. <laughs> right. Uh, could you imagine everyone to have diarrhea or, or really bad constipation because they don't drink enough? <laughs> yes. That would be bad. Um, so also, we shouldn't feed them to soothe them, right? Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Do you see that a lot with infants? Mm -hmm. um, they cry, and then the first thing that they think of is give them a, the bottle. But that is not the first thing you should think of, is maybe give them a pacifier and see. Right. Because they might just need to soothe. And if you get them in the habit of eating, then that sets them up for a whole world. Right. I mean, maybe they're with, sleepy, right? Right. So now you've taught them that the milk that they suck on a bottle to put themselves to sleep, and now you wonder why a toddler wants a bottle to go to bed. Okay. Yeah, so that's tough. You know, if you can recognize your infant's, um, you know, cues, what they're yeah. telling you, yeah, you just and they have different level. cries for different things. Actually, that's true. Um, if you can figure that out, which usually you can, um, it's it. You know, they do have to. They tell you in their own other way. Um, and we already said don't clear plate. Oh yeah, what is this? Don't punish with food. Do people do that? Well, it's not like, you know, you're going to eat this because you've been bad. It's more like you can't eat that. Like, you can't have dessert because you, you didn't eat. Oh. That's what it is. I do that. A, a lot of people do. I mean, it's it works, you know? And it's just like the whole thing with, like, you know, getting candy for potty training. I mean, we use food all the time because it's effective, you know? But it doesn't help like kids. To our dogs too. I know. I mean, it works. But it doesn't help you have a good relationship with food. Is the problem, <clears throat> right? It just teaches but you that. But we're supposed like, to give them dessert if they're naughty. No. Well, it shouldn't matter. They should get their dessert regardless. Sure. You should decide oh, when. Oh, they should just go to bed early. I like you that. could just decide it's not. It's not we're nobody not, gets nobody's dessert having, tonight. It's not dessert night. You don't have dessert yeah. every single night, no, do you? No, I don't. So you could decide ahead of time, okay, we're having dessert on these nights. All these or kids whatever. have been naughty. There's no dessert tonight. They don't know it. They, but, you know, they that shouldn't that shouldn't be the connection made. I gotcha. That, that, you know, food is not a reward or a punishment. Okay. So how should we reward them for peeing in the potty? So I'm dealing with this right now. And well, it's a struggle. what about, like, a sticker chart that leads to oh, some? Oh, I could do a sticker chart. Yeah. Sticker chart it is. Okay. Done. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. <laughs> um, what it. about, oh yeah, we already talked about um, portion sizes. You yeah. know, I was interested to read about um, don't let them graze um, or have frequent snacks. But little kids, they just don't eat. You they, know, like they don't eat a lot, so they true. eat often. So how do you not let them graze? So the first thing is that most of the time, meals and snacks should be at the table, right? Sure. They shouldn't be like walking oh, around, playing and eating. Or and in my bedroom. No yeah. food in the bedroom. No. no. I don't even eat in the bedroom. Food. Yes. No. Food should happen in the kitchen at designated times. Yeah. And the parents are in charge of, you know, not only what is being served, but when. Right. So, but for toddlers, it's true that they need to eat pretty often every, like, two to three yeah, hours you should be eating. offering a meal or snack yeah. but the grazing is when it's like one meal or snack turns into the next and there's gotcha. they're just constantly i mean first they're of all, like it's, always yeah eating. it's not good for their teeth yeah. they don't get hungry or full because they're just constantly like grabbing a little this or that yeah and it's easy to fall into that because they like to eat so often and because they're so easily distracted and you know, and they eat slow, and it takes oh. forever, right? Tell me about it. So you and then really, they think it's fun to throw it on the floor and feed right. the dog, right? So then you know, then that meal is done, right? Like okay, I'm so done with that. You're meal. all done with that. You're not coming back. Like don't allow them to get down and, and then get, get up. back up again. Yeah, no, I take the plate away, and then they cry, and I'm like, dude, yeah, we were eating. Where were you? 
Right. You missed it. You can come back next time. Yeah. There's a meal right around the corner in a couple yeah. of hours. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. But it is really hard to institute that. Like, mm -hmm. kids should sit at the table and you should sit with them. Yeah, like it is you so need to model the right? Behavior, right? You need to model, but yeah. it's so tempting to like put them in the high chair, you throw mm -hmm. some food on their tray, and then you go do stuff. Yeah, right? right. Maybe you're washing the dishes, or you're cooking the next meal, or whatever you're doing. Sit yeah. down with your yeah. toddler. And I try to trick them. them. I'm like, oh, that's my bite. Right, but my it's, son's like. Give me that back mine. That's mine. Mommy, mine. mine. And they don't share. Yeah. But it's so important that they yeah. see you eating healthy stuff. Healthy, normal mm -hmm. stuff that they are then going to like eat someday. Yeah. You know? And as they get older, they get to eat more of what's what you know, the same yeah. similar or same thing that you're eating. Yeah. And they want to eat it. But if they never see you eating it, if you they're always eating at a different time than you, yeah, they don't get that. Yeah. So you really want to make sure you sit down as a cabin. Yeah, and you know what helps um, also? My daughter, I know, like, my kids, they, mm -hmm. one will like something and the other one won't, period. Mm -hmm. And it's never in Dean. And then there's Dean. And he doesn't, I'm always surprised if he does like something. Mm -hmm. So then um, Emmeline, my middle one, she goes, Dean! Eat this. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite. You got to try it. It's so yummy. Come on. Does that work? And then, yeah, sometimes he'll try it. Nice. And then, um, and then he'll like give it to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but at least he tried it, you know. Um, and you know, he he's a hummus freak, so he actually steals everyone's hummus. And um, yeah, that's just how he gets to that hummus stuff. I always have some hummus. But then he also gets everything else. Right. Because, you know, you got to give it all. Of, they have to be able to see it all those times, like you say. Yes. And then maybe he'll put it in his mouth one time and doesn't like the texture and it comes out. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. it, it, they need multiple exposures. So, you know, try to avoid, you know, taking something off the menu just because, you know, you gave them to them once or twice and they didn't go for it. Like, they need to see it. Before they even taste it, they might need to see something okay. new and unusual, like multiple times, like 10 or 20 times. Yeah. And then they might decide to put it in their mouth. And even then, then they need then multiple they times of that before they, before they like, might eat it. Yeah. So here's my big question. What do you do when you get home, right? And you've just picked them all up from school and daycare and you get home and you're trying to make dinner and they're crying. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. Ah! Give me some paper spoon or whatever, you know. <laughs> Fruit snack, paper spoon. Right. You know, what do you do? <laughs> Cheese. So the ideal situation, and I appreciate that this is not always what's going to work out, but yeah. ideally what you do is you have some like, Fruits and vegetables, maybe a little piece of cheese or something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, stuff you could just put out, like oh. fruits and vegetables. So it's okay to do that. They're not going to disrupt their, you know, appetite okay. for meals, right? So that would be the perfect stuff to put out. Okay. Or maybe it's stuff you were going to serve at dinner and they just happen to get it early. Early. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. So like peanut butter and banana or something. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I might do that. Yeah. But, you know, if it's right before a meal... You go easy on the peanut butter or cheese or something, yeah. Because then it's gonna foam up. Then it's gonna foam up. Yeah. So you, you know, it's mostly about fruits and vegetables and stuff. It's just to tide them over for a short bit. But if it's more than an hour, then yeah, yeah, it's gonna be more than an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go for it. Usually, I'm like, oh, I can't make anything because you guys are climbing on me. Uh -huh. it takes me forever. Yeah. So this is where like pre pet prepping really mm. helps. If yeah. you, you know, if you can do you it can and you that. have that stuff all ready to go and you're just, whoop, you put yeah. it out. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. I, I just, my weekend never comes out that way. So yeah. I don't know. Um, what else? Oh, what about salt? Salt is a really important mm. thing because um, like flavor is really important for toddlers. You shouldn't be afraid of flavor. They don't no. need to eat bland food. Uh -huh. I mean, they're, they need spice. They're people just and like excitement. we are. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't need salt. And yeah. the sooner you introduce salt, the sooner they get used to it yeah. and accustomed, and then they want it. But if you don't yeah. introduce it, it, they don't miss it. 
My kids are a little bit mediocre on the salt. Um, they, my son, he likes to ruin his meal with salt, mm -hmm. and it goes, mm -hmm. and then you can see it. And yes. then he has a reason not to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and my daughter is kind of like, uh, my youngest daughter, she's like, well, I think this needs salt. And then she'll use some. But then half the time she doesn't. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. My older one, she's the same one. So they're not like really salt at all. I'm not a salt at all. Yeah. I don't put a lot of salt in things either because I feel like if you need it salted. Yeah, you put it on top. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Yeah. But, you know, we naturally like sweet as babies, right? We, oh, we have a propensity gosh. towards sweet, but we don't have that propensity towards salt. salt. It's learned. Oh, so the longer good. you can delay that, the better. The better. Which means, you know, so how long should we delay it? Like as long as, like forever, if you okay. can. Which yeah. is obviously not going to happen. But you know, as long as you can, because they don't need it and they don't miss it. Right. So as soon as they start having it, like when you introduce, you know, processed food or fast food, like then they start to like, oh, this is interesting. Well, like, yeah. Yes. And then they want it. My mom was a saltaholic, and so I remember in, I don't know, I think I was in high school or something, I um, just stopped eating salt for a while, mm -hmm. it took me a couple of weeks, and then after that I was like, oh, I, I can put it on, I can put it off. Yeah, you kind of reset your whatever. taste buds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, the other thing about, like, when you're saying about introduce, sometimes you have to introduce the food so often, you know, mm -hmm. before they try it, but you can also... Um, pair them right with other foods like that helps to associate oh yeah um like yummy with new stuff right like if they like hummus then serve it with hummus yeah or they like other kinds of dips or yeah anytime you can pair it with something familiar yeah then uh, that helps or just try different ways right like it's cooked or it's raw yeah. it's cut, cut like this or it's cut like that or it's with dip or it's not you know I tell my son oh, to, yes, um, yeah. hey, dip your green beans in the hummus. It's yummy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is to his <laughs> bad. So, hey, he yes. eats it that way. Um, and then what about food chaining where you, like, present the same, like, a new one that has a similar texture or something or taste as an old one? Does that work? Oh, um, what do you mean? Like, say they like French fries, so you put something else like a yeah. shape of French mm -hmm. fries. Yeah, like <laughs> zucchini. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Does that work? I think it can sometimes work. I mean, yeah. every kid's different, right? Unfortunately, so the same they tricks never that work follow, for one. Yeah, they, they, they never follow the book. Yeah. It's annoying. It is. It yeah. Is. But the important thing for parents is just to kind of like try to stay China. relaxed, right? repetition is your friend yeah. and try not to stress and obviously don't force like don't get into a yeah. battle of wills with your toddler oh gosh yeah you know you know what you'll never win you I'm sorry not. they are good yeah they're so good mm -hmm. yeah. and you know that it's normal actually to be picky right it's like 25 to 30 percent yes. of all kids are picky and right. that's considered normal mm -hmm. in this age group Right, they're they're picky. Yes, they're they're. I mean, we all say, "Oh, my kid's picky," but they it's are. normal. Like that is how they eat. What happens though when it becomes like an issue? How old is it when you should say, "Okay, this shouldn't be"? Well, I mean, it could be at any age if it's affecting growth, right? If they if their appetite if their intake is so limited, either in like range of foods or amounts, that it's affecting their growth. And that's obviously a problem and you know you at least want to talk to your doctor about it you might you know seek out a dietitian to figure out how to handle that yeah um there's certainly good books from ellen satter who is kind of the um you know she kind of uh, established the whole idea about like the role of parents and kids when it's for feeding mm -hmm. um she's got an excellent website that's a great resource um called uh it's uh the ellen satter institute oh yeah so right i've heard of her yeah yeah i mean she's really she's well done known. a ton with kids she's done a ton yeah. and a lot of great resources yeah. she's got books but even on the website for free a lot of great resources oh, based okay. on age and what you do and like your sort of regular 
picky kid and you're extreme picky and like how to manage all that. So I encourage people to check that out. That's great. Um, but you know, so it, it, you know, the important thing is to like not worry and to really follow your doctor's lead because you if know, they're not worried, to, right? We tend to worry as parents. Like it's we worry about everything. Yeah. You know, even like how many times have they poop and pee? Mm -hmm. Really? Right. I from, mean, from if day you one, think we're about, worried about stuff. like when your baby is little, all you're obsessed about is eat, pee, and poo, right? Oh, and then and, and sleep. sleep too. Yeah. Well, yeah, but um, but a lot of times they are only worried about sleep if they're not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> what? But then, like, think about then you have this period of we don't care about pee and poo. And then, like, when you get old again, we're back to our cycle of everything revolves around when you poop. <laughs> oh, so so true. Yeah. We're just always looking for something to worry about. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anything else? Um, Any other things you missed? Sure. I think those are the main things. Okay. That, you know, we're just talking about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Those are all, I think we covered all the things. Okay. So, we got it all. And um, next week, what are we thinking about talking about? Well, so we've got, um, no you know, somebody asked me to do a um, thyroid um, talk. And so maybe doing the endocrine disruptors would actually be a good thing hmm. kind of to talk about yeah. since we just added that to the list. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. So this time next week, be here. And we are going to talk about endocrine disruptors. Always, always, always remember that if you have any questions, you can always ask, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And we hope that you guys have a lovely rest of your week, and we will see you next week. Thanks. Oh, and, you know, you can find us everywhere. Remember that. Always, everywhere, here, YouTube, Facebook. Oh, wait, we are on Facebook. <laughs> um, website, website, YouTube. Yeah. Are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, yeah. but I'm not very active on Twitter. Maybe I should be. Anyways, you can find us everywhere. On YouTube, please like us because then you get all of our videos when they're updated and you don't miss a thing. That's right. So, anyway, all right, we will see you guys next week um, for endocrine disruptors. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye bye.